tell me a little bit about what this project would entail? Sure. Um, so a better city has been part of a, a um, really diverse group of stakeholders who have been advocating for this I-90 Austin multimodal project for many years now. Um, and the project represents what we believe is a once in a generation opportunity to transform the Western Gateway to Boston. So if you're traveling um, on the pike uh, to or from Boston, you are coming on, in on this elevated uh, highway viaduct. So it's a, an elevated structure, uh, was built in the 1960s, is really a relic of now outmoded transportation policy. And so, um, you know, it, you're really, you know, kind of shoehorned between uh, the Charles River and the BU campus. And what this project represents the opportunity to do is to take down that aging relic um, and to bring the roadway down at grade, so so uh, uh, you know ground level, um, and really to reconnect the Austin community with the Charles River, enhancing um, access to the river, restoring the riverbank, creating new opportunities for um, walking and cycling right along the Charles River, and also flattening and straightening the roadway for for safer travel on the pike itself and up, opening up a new opportunity for development in an area called Beacon Park Yard. Um, and arguably most impactfully, um, also establishing a new stop on the commuter rail called West Station. So uh, the project is really a, a transformational opportunity to create new transportation options for transit connectivity, but also active transportation. Um, really unprecedented new development opportunities within the city of Boston and also um, got really noteworthy uh, environmental benefits as well. So paint a little bit of, of a picture for me, Kate, about, you know, the current landscape that's in Alston with the current infrastructure in place and what's wrong with it and why it's not working anymore. Yeah. Um, so the status quo isn't working for a number of reasons. I think, um, again, a legacy of, of past planning policies and, and practices has really cut off the neighborhood of Alston from access to the river and limited um, uh, community access to transit options as well. Um, so by removing the viaduct, flattening and straightening the roadway, creating these new opportunities for connectivity, establishing a new commuter rail stop. You're really opening up access. You're reconnecting, restitching that community. Um, and, you know, this project won't just have benefits for Alston or the city of Boston, but really region wide benefits in terms of uh, connectivity between uh, Boston and Worcester, for example, um, connecting some really um, uh, uh, globally significant uh, life sciences and biotech hubs. Um, and so it really represents uh, a, a, a transformational opportunity for the entire region, not just for Boston. So over the past several decades, you know, there's really been an emergence in terms of um, urban planning philosophy around multimodal connectivity. And what that really means is just giving people different options to get around the region, you know, in, in different ways. So, um, you know, right now we see, again, the prioritization and the elevation of, of car travel. Um, but by reconfiguring this interchange and really changing the scale of it, you'll see more of a multimodal approach to transportation and mobility taking shape. A key benefit of this project would be straightening uh, the roadway and bringing it down. So improved safety on the roadway is a key component of this. Um, and so with the highway reconfiguration, you're opening up Beacon Park Yard as a new area for development. Um, and we at A Better City have done some economic forecasting about um, GDP impacts, job creation associated with development at Beacon Park Yard. It's a really exciting inflection point right now because the city of Boston is moving forward with a visioning process for, for the neighborhood. Um, and it just is an incredible opportunity to think about, um, you know, not just job creation, but the creation of housing, sorely needed housing, and the creation of a new neighborhood. What do we want it to look like? So the city of Boston has already started to convene these conversations to develop a framework, a planning framework for um, what a new neighborhood, what new commercial districts uh, could look like within Beacon Park Yard.
What benefits do you think that current business owners in that area might expect with this project? So I think connectivity is just a huge boon for residents and businesses alike. Um, to have a new commuter rail stop created at West Station um, will really be a game changer. And it's not just about that commuter rail access, but it's about the opportunity to make West Station a multimodal hub with bus connectivity, um, with pedestrian and cycling access, really ensuring that, you know, it's not just a, an isolated stop on the commuter rail, but there are connections to be made across the region. Do you foresee, so with that highway, you know, now being straight and lowered, do you yeah. see like pedestrian bridges crossing it to help people connect to the river and stuff? How would that work? Yeah, there's a there's a series of um, of crossovers planned, and and frankly, some of the scope is still um, under development, uh, and it's a real priority for organizations like a Better City and other local local stakeholders who are part of this People's Bike Coalition um, to ensure that uh, these points of connectivity, these bridges, really meet the needs of the local community and take every opportunity to enhance access to the river, to enhance access to existing and new pedestrian and cycling pathways as well. Um, so there are, are really important uh, conversations still going on to refine those project elements. And if you don't mind, could you just kind of spell out to me, you know, where are we at with this planning process and what hurdles still are in the way? Sure. Um, so right now, as I mentioned, this project has been in, in development for several years. And what's really exciting right now is that there has never been more support for this project. So we see right now incredible advocacy happening uh, from our congressional delegation, from the Healy Driscoll administration, um, from folks in the state house like Rep Moran, from the Wu administration, and members of both the Boston and Worcester business community, and of course, local stakeholder groups in Austin. Um, so there's a really important inflection point coming up. Um, back in September, the state and city applied for a pot of federal funding uh, that's been made available through the Biden administration's infrastructure funds. Um, it's called the Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods Grant program, which is a mouthful, but there is an uh, exciting opportunity because the project really does seem to um, embody the intent of this specific grant program, which is really to restitch and reconnect communities like Alston that have been divided by um, transportation infrastructure of the past. So in the coming weeks, uh, we expect there to be a decision on this specific grant application. And I think there is a widespread consensus that the Commonwealth and the city have submitted a very strong competitive application for federal funding. So should that um, funding come through, that would be a, a, a really huge uh, boon for the project to advance through the process. Um, this, you know, this, 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 if that doesn't happen, if that funding doesn't come to fruition, um, you know, I think this, this coalition will, will stay in place and continue to build momentum and, you know, assess future federal funding opportunities and um, uh, state and local funding opportunities as well. But right now there's a tremendous amount of momentum uh, advocating for this specific federal grant opportunity that we expect to, to hear about um, in the coming weeks. How much money could we see if that grant comes down? So the, the state and city applied for $500 million through this specific um, uh, grant program. Um, and so that's probably a tremendous slug of federal funding. Um, and again, it's just been an incredible coordinated advocacy effort, um, really all levels of government working together, federal, state and local. Um, you know, the Healy Driscoll administration in particular has put a very strong emphasis on aggressively pursuing uh, federal funding opportunities, especially infrastructure dollars. Um, and so, you know, this is this is a project that is really being advanced, um, you know, through those efforts. Um, the total project cost is estimated around 1.9 billion so 500 million is a is a big chunk of that and i know this is probably a very tough question to answer given how much is up in the air but what do you think realistically is the soonest that someone that we could say maybe this could be done that is a tough question i will say that um you know once 
project funds are secured and all the permitting is in place, we anticipate that the project could be constructed in six to eight years. So, um, you know, that gives us some sense of, of, of a window. Um, you know, while this coalition is, is working to secure federal funding, um, you know, additional funding commitments have already been made by uh, state and local partners as well. Um, and the project is advancing through the environmental review process. So we're not waiting on, you know, each individual federal funding application to determine the project's fate. Um, you know, we're all pushing forward. Um, and really, MassDOT is driving this this project, of course, in coordination with the city of Boston, um, but pushing forward through the environmental um, review and approval process.